Let's take a look at the clothes and armor depicted in the trailer for Assassin's Creed Valhalla and see if they are historically accurate. And also, at the end of the video, I shall talk more about my plans for my channel and changes that will be occurring. And for those who are worried about my original content no longer continuing, I am intending to continue much of it. And I will speak about that at the end of the video, so please continue until then. Now, if we look at the other side of the trailer, we see this opening in what must be the town in Norway or Denmark. And there are good things to this and bad things. First, as a caveat, when I'm talking about the tunics, I'm going to talk about tunics and the design of tunics. Ignoring the fact that in here, they have inaccurately men and women and boys and girls wearing the same tunics and pants, which was not the practice. Women would wear dresses that would go down to the ankles. They would be made in a similar manner to the men's tunics, but the men's tunics ended at the knees like we see everyone wearing here, while the women's dresses would go down to the ankles and would usually have an apron over the top. I do like the depictions of these tunics and their appearance. We have simple tunics going down to the knees with full-length sleeves. They're not always with it, they have full-length sleeves, but often they would with that round neckline with the slit, which is good. They may or may not have decorative trim on the edges. Decorative trim was very common on the edges, though not always, not necessarily, but that is good. I can't tell in any of these images if they have depicted the characters having an undershirt underneath, but that was the norm for wearing the tunic to have an undershirt, and even the dresses have an undershirt underneath. I like that they are of full colors. Color was liked. Now they have them all inaccurately all in the same color, which wouldn't be very common, but I'm pretty sure that's for gameplay reasons to distinguish different groups. But blue was a very popular color of all of its shades. Also, reds and yellows were very popular colors, and you usually have a solid tunic of one of those colors. I do like that they have the tunics held with a simple leather belt, which is looped around itself and pulled down. That is the appropriate way to wear those belts. And I like we have the baggy and simple colored pants. That would be a very common thing of that era. And there we would have more baggy pants. So later they would become more tight as we get into the later Viking Age and out of the Viking Age. Now, when it comes to things, we have everyone wearing shin boots. Shin boots were not very common. They did exist, but not very common. And also, usually wouldn't have a wrap like we see around. There was that leather just wrapped around and made around it. No, there would normally be like a leather loop and buckle type of situation. Maybe mostly out of leather, or maybe leather and a bone or wood knob to hold on when looped. Most people would be wearing simple leather turn shoes going up to their shins and if they need more protection of their legs they would have a wrap going up their shin. Now when we get to these I guess supposed to be the raiders preparing to go out on a raid. Specifically looking mainly at this where I first thought was a man but it's apparently a woman there in the middle with the wolf over his shoulders. That whole outfit's bad. It is very different than anything they would have worn at the time. Throwing the animal skin over your shoulder was not really a thing of the time to our knowledge, and also that kind of hodgepodge layers of the outfit are not very accurate. Now we must go on to what is the worst, most offending example in this. This priestess's attire. I don't know what to call it. The whole thing is inaccurate. The jewelry is not right for the jewelry of the time. Though necklaces were very common, but not of that style. Nor that head, the jewelry she has thrown over her headdress thingy. Though previously in the band, i back to the Bronze Age, or Bronze Age, uh, ceremonial helmets with horns were a thing. They would not look like that, and would need to be more like a helmet with small horns attached, in those cases, usually made out of the same metal as a helmet, or a small cap with them. Not like that. And they rest out with that deep V neck, kind of floppiness, and no, no, that's not a historic outfit. That just looks atrocious. That is pure fantasy fiction. Now we go on to the Viking raiding the Anglo-Saxon town. Here the Vikings outfits, they don't look good. We see some Anglo-Saxon soldiers on the ground and their helmets, it's great to have helmets. The first piece of armor you would buy would be a helmet. And yes, I'm not considering it as a piece of armor because it is a tool and a weapon kind of like a sword or an axe, though it's more defensive. So a helmet would be the first piece of armor you would 
1985, which is good. I can't really say much more about their outfits because it's hard to see it, though it appears their helmets are painted, which to my knowledge wasn't a thing of that year. Also, if you look at this man, first up in the front, looks to be a villager. His outfit is out of place. He has traveled a few hundred years back in time. Because that outfit looks more 13th century than of this era. So that is also rather inaccurate. As he's out of place. But it would look good for much of the hair period. I do like the multicolored nature of it. But we do also get some good appearance outfits. Here we have this woman running with children. She has a long dress that goes down to her ankles. And a cloak. That looks really good. Now they are more brown colored her outfit, but that can be used at times. They wouldn't have been that common for the dress itself, but the tunic maybe. Well, I mean the cloak, sorry, misspoke there, but it looks rather good. And we see through the clip, though it's hard to get it, the little girl is wearing a nice blue dress with a kind of Apron over the front, which is also good. And all about that would be what they would be wearing. And the boy in the background has that to it, goes down to the knee, and the outfit, those outfits look really good. Though our Viking friend, once again, his outfit's bad. Not anything in historical. It looks great in a dramatic sense, but historical, not at all. Then we go into who I guess is supposed to be Alfred the Great. And his outfit here is not historical, not of the period. To my knowledge, elbow length gloves were not really a thing of this era, as this would be the 9th century. They would come along much later, and this outfit looks like say more inspired by the 12th century. Though I don't think it, it doesn't look exactly accurate for say the 12th century, but that kind of cloak with the draping, I can't remember what that's called, that he has on, and the designs, so on and that style, that all looks more 12th or 13th century, though even then I don't think it's active that year. If we look at this other man in the back, his tunic looks good, and I like the trim on the edges of it, and it is a short sleeve tunic, which they did have. But that leather breastplate he has, not a thing to my knowledge any year around then. And if it's supposed to be armor, it definitely would not work well as armor, that's way too thin. And if just decorative dress, to my knowledge, it would not have them. It would just be nicer tunic, both of them should wear. A nicer made tunic, maybe extra layer to it. Some nicer trim around the edges. And a nicer belt. More just up quality from what the was wearing. And now we go back to our Viking friends. Or, when we really look at these outfits with the fur over the shoulders, the random scraps of leather, their random hairdos, and war on, they more look like Warhammer Norska. Is this Assassin's Creed Norska? I mean it. These look like same thing, not anything historical. This is not how Vikings would dress. Now, some of these hairdos might fit, but we don't exactly know exactly of Viking hairdos. But, other than that, not really. I mean, these really look like Assassin's Creed Norska. I even think I saw this character in in Warhammer, in Total War Warhammer, Norska. No, I mean, Total War Warhammer 2 as a character of the Norska. They look like Norska. They don't look like Vikings. But uh, that brooch for holding on that fur, though it should be holding on a cloak, that brooch looks good. So that brooch is good. That circle loop with the pin, that is good. But the, and I like his chain though, but the rest of his outfit's bad. It's just bad. Now we go down to the battle. Here we see in this edge this Anglo Saxon soldier, and I like his helmet. And the chief plate, so the size of the helmet go down too far. It should be more even the ring right above the ears, and then with the cheek plates going down from there. Those cheek plates are a little small, but the average style of the helmet looks good. I can't really say much more about his outfit, but it looks like the stuff thrown over his tunic, the other than armor. Which, to my knowledge, really wouldn't be something. Here we come over to these two Anglo-Saxon soldiers fighting a Viking. And their outfits, for the most part, look really good. I love the chainmail. The chainmail looks good. Uh, I'm not sure if the slits on the edges would be accurate, but it does go down to roughly the knees, which would be good at that time, and it is short sleeve. That is good. He appears to have some band braces on, which could be a thing. We don't know how common band braces were, but we have found band braces from roughly that era with metal splints down them, which would work, though the splinting ones would be more common later. 
once again with the helmet, for the most part with the, the protective guard for the nose, cheek was kind of fine, but once again they have it swooping down to go over the ears. The helmets of the ear are set up mostly above the ear, like we see the man for the back with the nasal helmet. Also, they have them painted, which to my knowledge wasn't really a thing of that era. Later era helmets at the end of the Middle Ages could often be painted, but at this age, to my knowledge, not only really painted. And now to the man in the act, the symbol on the shield looks more of a Byzantine symbol. It looks like a double eagle, which is more of a Byzantine symbol. Though, I, ha I have heard that in some Assassin's Creed games, apparently they make connections with Byzantines to the Assassin's enemies at Templar, which I didn't play those specific of the Assassin's Creed games, so I can't say, or at least if it was but it's the ones I have played, I didn't remember hearing it. But the tunic that man is wearing, that the soldier is wearing, does look pretty good. And we go down here, we have this Anglo Saxon soldier, fine, once again, I'm biking completing that crowd, but this Anglo Saxon soldier's outfit looks pretty good. And then the shield's wrong for the arrow, but we have that tunic going down. Uh, there may have been some split in the front tunics, I'm not sure. I more know of the splits on the side tunics, but the white tunic going down the knees, bright color like the red, the pants like we have here, that looks pretty good. If we go down, once again we have that, I guess he was an advisor to the king, his tunic looks good with that trim around the edges and bright color. Uh, those Bracers he has on, not really anything of there, there's a sawmill, not really anything of that era. I like it, it's an undertook of different color, which is nice. But that leather breastplate thingy, no, that does not look right for the era. And the cloak looks mostly fine, though I think they were probably wearing the broad on a little bit to offset to the side, not usually in the front. But yeah, that's what I'm there. And that flag, I'm not sure why it's torn up, that's alright. But the helmet of those. Troops behind them, they look mostly good, though once again they appear painted. And one of them does go over the ears, which isn't really a thing of the era. But we've got two nasal helms though, which do look good. Now, I wanted to once again speak about the chainmail. I like the chainmail. The chainmail that they depict looks good, good chainmail. It looks proper with the old, but that looks good. Actually, both the Vikings and Anglo Saxons should be wearing roughly the same gear. The gear would look rather similar, just with different symbols on the shields. But the chamber looks great, it's so good, I wanted to look at it a little closer. But look, they have the links tightly together and looped in, which is really good. That axe shouldn't be going into it, but the links are linked very well. The chainmail is great. But now, we go on to this. And we look here, uh, that animal size, so I guess it's supposed to have something like a padded to it. That may have been a thing, we don't know. I don't know what the decorations around the wrists are. I've not seen any examples of such decorations depicted in art or in archaeological finds. Maybe there are some. That took all seems like it might be a little too long. And I do like the nasal helm, though I don't know of any that would have been painted. If we look at this Viking woman, the shield maiden, though she lacks a shield, next to him, don't know why I just stand on that. I know why in trailer wise, but it doesn't make sense in the battle sense. Her outfit, if you remove the fur, would look drastically better because she's got. Because I would expect if a Viking woman did go out and raid, she probably would be wearing more of a tunic and pants like the men would often be wearing, as it would be more advantageous in a raiding sense. Um, but that belt I think looks a little too thick and not in some type of belt that would be worried of that era. But if you remove, if you change that to a simple belt that's looped like the previous belt I mentioned, and remove the fur, her outfit would look pretty good as it's dark colors, but dark colors were occasionally worn. Now we get on to this guy. At best I can describe him as an Anglo-Saxon trying to cosplay as a Byzantine cataphract. Because the scale armor kind of is reminiscent of Byzantine cataphracts, though not as well covered as Byzantine cataphracts armor. As it doesn't cover the arms as well. And then we got this helmet that kind of has an appearance of some Anglo-Saxon helms. Uh, with the going over the head with protection around the cheeks, the, cut, the spectral nature of it, which the Anglo Saxons use and the Vegas use spectral helm, and with the depiction of eyebrows on the helm. But then it's got a early Roman and Greco style crest on it, which I don't know of crest like that being used on a helmets of this time. 
And the scale armor looks any more like the Byzantines would have been using at this time, though it's not as well made as that one. I mean, you know, this scales like that, that's very Byzantine in appearance. So, this is a little confusing with his outfit. It's more of a hot person, very fancy, but at least there's some draw from things at the time or earlier. But that is to look at the clothing and armor of the trailer. We both have good and bad examples. Now, as I said, I was going to speak about my plans for my channel. As I make kind of eclectic videos of many different topics, I'm planning to split my channel and make two channels that are more directed. Using this channel primarily for history and history related content, as I, where I look at lots of historically inspired video games to see how they compare to history, while we'll also talk about historical topics. I plan to cover history, everything from Paleolithic all the way up to recent history. There will probably more of a focus into Bronze Age, as I was only making videos of then, I will continue again. The Roman era, the Middle Ages, specifically into the later Middle Ages, and also the Viking Age and some stuff into later eras. And that's my plans for this channel. And I will look at both primary sources of history and at how people depict history like I'm doing right now. My second channel I'm planning to make will go and cover my writing and world building and other related content. There I will make my new writing videos to go along with the fact I am a writer. I am writing a novel right now, a fantasy novel. And also, I will cover my world building and the, my advice on world building as I go to. I might also cover book reviews on that second channel. Still working on creating it, so it does not yet have a title. Though it might be called Error Manor, Quinn and, Quill and Ink, or something like that. Though that's not yet decided. And I also maybe will cover gaming related stuff related to gaming other than those aspects directly related to history, where I'm looking at how they compare to history. And so that's my plans for my channel going forward. If any of you have opinions on that, or ideas, or what are your opinions on it, please mention them down in the comments below. And this is Aaron Miller, out. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe.